Three. Fuck it. There's no, there's no words on it. Tomorrow. Fuck it. We'll do it live. Fuck it. Because I've never seen that. Fucking thing sucks. There's no words there. Fuck it. There's no, there's no words on it. Tomorrow. Fuck it. We'll do it live. Fuck it. Because I've never seen that. Fucking thing sucks. There's no words there. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Fuck. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Fuck. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Fuck. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what. Go. Go. I can't do it. Fuck it. Go. Go. I can't do it. Fuck. Fuck it. Go. Go. I can't do it. Fuck it. Go. Go. I can't do it. Thanks again for watching. Fuck it. There's no. There's no words on it. Fuck it. We'll do it live. Fuck it. Cause I've never seen that. Fucking thing sucks. There's no words there. Fuck it. There's no. There's no words. Get away. Fucking live. All right, everybody. Dark Horse Live, episode 41. Uh, tonight uh, with us, we have Coma the Grower. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be a good one. All right, let's right off the bat. You already know what the fuck we do on this show if you're here early. So, free shit. Maybe. It's free! There it is. All right, on the show is Coma. So, the key word is going to be Coma. Uh, we're giving away Stockton Slap, uh, Stockton Slap C 12-pack. Um, the email that you're going to send is at the very bottom of your screen. Free shit email, darkhorsegenicslive at gmail.com. I will pick the 10th, the 30th, and the 75th person. So we'll give away three of these fuckers and uh, get them out to you guys. Uh, if you are watching, you may have already won. I'm on like two or three shows behind right now, so I will catch up later tonight or tomorrow and uh, get those out. So some of you guys who have won... Uh, yeah, you, um, you guys may have already be a winners. You just don't fucking know it right now. But once again, the keyword is coma and, uh, yeah, I have coma joining me here. So let me plug them in. Sign. There we go. This should work. Let me see if I got them. Hold. There we go. Coma, can you hear me, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, All sir. right. We've got him. Welcome. Thank you for doing this, man. I really appreciate you coming on Dark Horse Live. It's an honor to have you on here. So um, as we do with all of our guests, we kind of just do like a tell us your journey. And I always start at the very beginning. Can you tell us the first time uh, your first cannabis experience? You remember what your first time you ever got high, bro? Uh, yeah, my first cannabis experience, I didn't get high, but I think uh, it's worth the telling the story. When we were um <laughs> We were little grimy street kids. All of our parents were fucking losers. And they would leave, like, you know, like a weed little tins around and shit or whatnot. I'm sure every one of us, any of, any of you 80s kids, I'm sure know exactly what I'm talking about. And um, I found my mom's, like, little tin, and I didn't know what I was doing. And I grabbed a bunch of fucking stems and seeds, and I walked up the street, and I told my friend Snot, and uh, this late uh, chick, Lisa McClooney, I was like, I got some, I got some uh, weed. I was like, let's smoke it. And they made like a tinfoil pipe and we sat on the corner of Homeland and McWay and fucking took STEMI seed hits. That's where fucking it starts. epic. But yeah, I didn't get high. And then like, I didn't smoke weed for years, probably like maybe like three years, four years after that. But yeah, that would probably put you I off smoking that bullshit. I just didn't, I just was always just running wild. I didn't have time to stop and do anything really, like sit down and I don't know what it was, but it just never like got to me. And then the first time I smoked, smoked, I was um, in Texas. I used to walk home from junior high 
the same way as this guy, Josh, that I ended up being really good friends with, still talk to today. But um, he would walk about a block in front of me or a block behind me. And we did that for a couple months, maybe. And one day we were leaving school and he just said, hey, he's like, we walk the same way. Let's walk together. And we were just walking. He's like, you smoke weed, man. And I didn't want to be like a bitch. I didn't want to. I just. I didn't want to be lame to this guy. So I was like, "Yeah, I smoke weed," but I didn't smoke weed. <laughs> I had never fucking smoked weed. And um, he goes, "All right, let's just drop your backpack. Let's go to my house, and I got some weed we could smoke." And I was like, "All right, fuck yeah!" Mind you, I don't really have. I've only been in Texas maybe like six months, eight months. I don't really have any friends and shit. So I was so fucking stoked, you know. Like, I dropped my backpack off at my house. We continue to walk another half mile, mile to his house. We get inside his trailer and we go back to his room and he's got a, he's got like a couch in his room and he just reaches under this like fucking shitty love seat couch and pulls out a gallon freezer baggie fucking stuffed to the brim. We are in seventh grade. <laughs> this is Texas in the fucking early nineties. It's like 94, and this kid, this kid who's in seventh grade has a fucking gallon freezer baggy stuff, and um, we just started taking bong rips off of this red plastic, one of those red plastic, like, half bent back with a finger Graphics. fucking carved, yeah. <laughs> and, um, dude, I just got torqued. I can hear him, so it looks like we're fucking back. It's always something with this fucking show. I tell you what, it's a true live show, so uh, there you go. You've seen an actual live fuck up. Um, but, uh, yeah, we're back. So I, I, where I lost that last heard what you were telling me, we were, you were talking about Texas seventh grade, huge pounds and, uh, getting high with the graphics bong or the plastic bong. So, uh, you gotta, I'll, I'll edit this shit back together, but you kind of want to take off from there or tell me wh where you were going yeah, yeah, yeah. with Let me, let me snack this devil here. Yes, sir. Welcome back, Cheers everybody. Everybody who joined, I know a bunch of people were asking me earlier on my live if uh, they were going to be able to watch. So, yeah, Dark Horse Live. If you're on example. IG, you can see a better version of the screen on uh, Dark Horse Live, just like the web address, Dark Horse Live. Or if you go to YouTube or Twitch, there's a uh, like a full screen. So you can see the whole fucking thing. If you're on IG, you're just seeing like I don't know, not five sixteenths oh, of the screen. That shit right. God damn it! I'm supposed to do this right here. <laughs> That's how all the heady kids do it. They take their fucking, they take their banger ass pendants and they take dabs with them and they like hold them in the screen while they're dabbing off their rig. I'm like, I always watch it. I'm like, hmm, I'm trying to figure it out. Like, I, I, I mean, I just, I, I'm not drawing a line in my fucking head here. This is what it is. But um, yeah, um, yeah, basically do that guy, Josh, just fast forward a little bit his pops was a badass grower in texas in the 90s so he was stealing pot from his dad really good homegrown pot he had about a half a pound stuffed in his couch that he didn't realize how much pot he had taken from his dad his dad had probably 20 30 packs i'm assuming so I had seen I'd seen a pile of weed later on in our relationship, me and my friend Josh. I saw a pile of weed in his dad's closet that was at least a couple ten pound bricks. So I know his dad was a was a gangster, and um, it was just a uh, it was a nice introduction to the plant. Like I remember feeling a huge relief because like I got really fucked up, and my whole life I had been carrying like a weight on me and i didn't know what it was i grew up with no real family ties and no everything was fucked up like it was all wrong that's so actually when i'm sorry to interrupt you but that's actually one of my questions that i want to ask you right now is what kind of kid were you were you like a good kid in my head i think of the movie problem child i don't really know you that personally but i think yeah, the movie problem no, child i'm kid. like that's coma as a kid yeah i was a bad kid i was, yeah, a, I was a bad kid, kid. yeah <laughs> i was a horrible child like i broke windows and i couldn't keep my hands off of things that didn't belong to me i was just an absolute horrible child but i look back now that i have children and i'm an adult and i know about how children are like how they're programmed it was just survival shit i was just like 
I was just like in my own world because nobody was there. Nobody was disciplining me. Nobody was taking care of me. I lived on the streets. Like I was raised by other kids. So of course it's going to be a total fucking mess. Like that's, <laughs> that's automatic. Like I'm lucky to even to have made it out and to have done something different. So a lot of the people that come from where I'm from are just, they're dead or in cages or they're living empty lives and they don't help anyone and they don't provide any light to anybody's existence. And I feel like I've ran very far away from all of what that is. So sure. Yeah, definitely. It was a it was a great first experience. I threw up all over the floor in his room, sunflower seeds that I had been eating on the way to his house. And uh, we both laughed about it. And then, yeah, I just smoked weed with him for years, him and a kid named Ian. We were like the Trace Amigos and we just got fucking high every day after school, like before <laughs> school, after school. We were just fucking constantly trying to get pot to get high. That was like seventh, eighth, ninth grade, pretty much just like every fucking day. It's a little unrelated, but it leads me to another question I have for you because you're kind of like a car guy. Uh, what was your first car? What was the first car that you um, ever called my yours? My first car was a Ford. It, well, see, this is where it gets weird. I got given a fucking Cadillac Coupe de Ville from my grandma. Oh yeah. Um, when I was like, I was like 20 years old, and I crashed it like two months after she gave it to me, <laughs> and I I fucking did like a. It's a kind of a crazy story, dude. But yeah, like I lost that car and um, I bought a car, a Ford Taurus, like a 99 Ford Taurus, that one with the weird bubble back end and the bubble window, <laughs> that ugly fucking 1999. Pull it up on your phone right now if you want to see Coma's first car. <laughs> but um, I, I got it and it, it held my tools in the trunk, dude. I used to uh, bang nails and shit, so... I didn't really need much. I just need to be able to get from A to B and hold my saws and my my compressor and my fucking bags, dude. And that's that's yeah, what dude. it did. I drove to work every day in it and that's fuck it. I put a bunch of stickers. I would get pulled over all the time. The whole back window is covered in stickers. And one of my friends passed away. His name was Piss Drunk. That was like his nickname. So I put in these giant white letters, <laughs> R.I.P. Piss Drunk. 8606 and fucking all the cops would ever see is piss drunk like that's what they would i know that's why they were pulling me over i literally would get pulled over like every month and they would just look at, look at me look through my car and let me go and it was just constant like oh my god that fucking car jesus christ so uh talk to me a little bit about like the start of your growing like, why did you start growing cannabis? Obviously, I, I think I know because you were smoking it heavily. But uh, why did, what led you to growing cannabis? So, growing seriously was... That is definitely a separate like situation and story from the first times I grew pot. Um, the very first time I grew pot, I grew a, a plant in a, like a fucking 15-gallon pot that was maybe eight inches tall and it had two buds on it that were i didn't have any i didn't i didn't know anything about light schedules or anything i don't i don't even know like what was happening but i had two buds on it and then i decided to clone the plant just cloning let flowering that sit shit i got you guys for a second just let that sit on you guys for a second <laughs> my very first pot plant it's week six of 12, 12, I'm assuming maybe week seven even. And I, someone told me, Hey, you can grow that pot again if you clone it. And I was like, clone it, huh? And he's all, yeah, just take a branch, cut it and stick it in water and it will root. And then you can grow more weed. And I was like, done deal. So I, <laughs> so I took one of the two buds on this little plant. And I cut it off and I put it in water and then it rotted. And then, yeah, there was that. So that was the first <laughs> pot plant I ever grew. Um, maybe a couple years later, I did something that I don't know if I've ever talked about online. I think I might have talked about it, but I definitely have never like gone into to depth about what I did. Um, I was living in this little neighborhood and I decided to finally like, I'm going to grow some pot. Like we had already been smoking pot for a while and it was like time. Like I want to grow this shit. I know I don't need to pay for it, but there was nowhere to grow it. So 
I got pretty fucking pretty 007. The next door neighbors had we had a wooden fence that separated our yards, like wooden planked fence, probably about 10 inch wide planks, half inch thick planks, just wooden planked fence. And on their side of the fence was a cactus wall about five feet off of the fence. That was just this huge cactus wall they had in their yard. So my smart ass realizes that on their side of the fence, there's a gap in between that cactus wall and the fence that's on their side of the fence. So I, (laughs) this is fucking amazing. Now that I look back, I just can't even fucking fathom that I did this. I jumped over their fence. I knocked off two planks in the middle of the night and I took them into my yard and I hooked them together. I hooked them together with a piece of wood And then I put them back on the fence with two hinges on their side and painted the hinges brown (laughs) so you couldn't even see them. And basically made a swinging door that worked from my side of the fence to their side of the fence in between that gap of the cactus. So I did that probably like two weeks before I put any plants back there. Um, I did that. And then for the next couple weeks, I dug two giant fucking holes in their backyard. And I was bringing the soil back into my yard. This is so fucking crazy. Mind you, I'm like 17 years old, dude. I'm a fucking kid. I'm, I'm just, I don't even know what the fuck I got going on in my head. Honestly, probably not. Um, I dig these two giant holes over like maybe a 10 day period. And then we start bringing in our own soil. So we're bringing in all this fucking bag soil from Home Depot and shit. We're just like potting soil, potting soil, just bags and bags of it, bags of it. We fill these fucking things up and then we drop in some plants that my friend had given me that were right perfect time, like maybe a foot tall. It's the very beginning of summer in Southern California. And now I have some sativa dom. Both of these plants were sativa dom plants in these fresh holes, fucking sun all day long. I'm not even joking, dude. It wasn't even July. And these fucking things are absolutely massive. And what I had been doing was just every other night opening the fence and bucketing water from my side of the fence into these holes that are right on the other side of the fence. This is the second time I've attempted to grow cannabis. I don't have any buds on these plants. They're just these fucking giant vegging plants. And I don't know anything about pot. I've, I really don't know much about it. Mind you, this is kind of like pre-internet. Like there might have been like web TV or something. Like you might have been able to get internet, but I didn't have no fucking internet. So I didn't know anything like there was no one to ask like i made this joke on my live the other day i was like we only knew what we knew and we didn't know anything like (laughs) i want to like i want to tell people like dude you know what it's like to not know anything and then you have to figure it out by (laughs) fucking up that's how i grew up Mm -hmm. so like i basically look over the fence one day it's like july maybe the second week of july it had been fucking 110 degrees I look over the fence because I can see the pop. I can see the top of the pot plants on my side of the fence, but they're still lower than the cactus wall, this giant cactus wall. So I was like, whatever. Like I wasn't going to, I didn't even think about pulling them, tying them down or anything. I didn't know what the fuck to do with them. I was just watching the shit play out. I look over the fence one day and they are fucking wilted. But nothing major, just what happens when a plant's like fully dry, you know what I mean? So the leaves are like kind of shutting down. And it was like maybe five at night. We still had another three hours of sunlight, soft sunlight, but we had another three hours of sunlight. And then I was always watering at like 10 o'clock at night. I wanted to make sure whoever was over there was asleep. But I couldn't do it, man. I saw my plants, dude. All this work, all this effort, all this time, all this energy, bro. And I could, I didn't know what I was looking at. I just see leaves like laying down, like yay. And I'm fucking losing it, man. I'm freaking out. I told my homie, I was like, listen, I don't know what to do, man. I gotta fucking water them right now. It was still, it, there was still light out. 
So I open the fence. I prop it up with the stick. I have a stick on my side that holds the fence open. I start taking buckets of water, right? And I'm putting buckets of water. All of a sudden, I just hear out of the yard, that's their yard, I just hear, hey, who the fuck is back there? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my fucking God. Dude, my dick and balls climbed inside of my chest. They were, like, up near my lungs. I couldn't. I was so fucking afraid i jumped through the fence mind you, this is so this is so crazy i jumped through the fence closed the fence 007 in my yard like the guy can probably see me but maybe not i don't know he's already like walking over i run inside my house close the door i'm looking like a fucking crackhead out this fucking tiny ass little crack in the blinds and i'm watching this dude and he's standing right on the other side of the fence in between the cactus and he's just standing there and he like peeks his head up and looks into my yard and sees I have all this water, all these big ass water jugs laid out for these two <laughs> big plants. He looks in my yard, looks at these pot plants, goes back into his yard. And I, and I'm fucking, I'm like, I'm going to fucking prison. I'm going to fucking prison. <laughs> like, that's what I thought. I'm, like, I'm a young kid, dude. I don't know much. I just know we're not allowed to grow pot and we're definitely not allowed to grow pot in our neighbor's yards with secret trap doors. This is all bad. This is all bad. So he goes back up into his fucking yard. I sit there and I wait. And then like a couple hours go by, it starts to get dark. And I was like, nothing's happened. No cops have come. Nothing's happened. So I told my friend, I was like, listen, we're going to dig them up and we're going to dig them out right now and put them in trash cans. And he's all, you're <laughs> fucking crazy. And I was like, oh, yeah, you think I'm fucking crazy? So literally, <laughs> right when it gets dark, I prop the fence back open. I jump through and with a spade shovel, like you told me that the fucking Pharaoh's fucking tomb gold was right there i was like you 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 <laughs> i just dug this giant fucking trench around this plant got the first one out stuffed it into a giant trash can like the street the giant trash cans that they give you for the city with the fucking wheels on them i put one of them in that i, I like literally pulled this giant fucking plant out with it was like a 50 gallon plus of soil I shove that with my friend into one of those trash cans. We wheel it through the fence. It's just a total fucking mess, dude. It's mangled. It's all fucked up. <laughs> Go back to get the second one. Do the same thing. Takes maybe a, two hours, maybe. Leave the holes all fucked up. Leave his fence with the hinges. I just left it all. I just closed it and <laughs> act like it never fucking happened. I fucking put them on the side of my house and they just fucking died. <laughs> they just died. It took like maybe like three days. They they fought like weed plants would fight, but then they just died because I had fucking ripped them out. And I was just like, it was this horrible, like the whole thing just totally traumatized me, dude. Like I didn't want to grow weed there. And I didn't grow weed in California for like the whole time. That was like the last attempt of me growing weed there like that. And I just um, came to Oregon later on in my life or for whatever, you know, I have some, that's a whole story of why I came here. And then I ended up growing here in Oregon and booyah. <laughs> so that was, uh, you sort of answered one of my questions on here, but uh, kind of who taught you. And as you sort of mentioned, like we, you were started at a time when nobody knew shit, but did you have a mentor or a go-to book or somebody teach you kind of the ropes Anybody so, you attribute that to? When I was in seventh grade, <clears throat> I had a teacher named Thomas Ray, who was uh, just a botanist, a science teacher, who was like really into plants, into soil liberty. Basically, he understood very simple concepts that I think a lot of growers try to go past, like just nutrient availability sure i mean that, i always those say two words, shit's those two words, science. You, you, people you want to make good seeds nutrient availability you want to have big buds nutrient availability you want to have bomb flavor in your cannabis nutrient availability uh, it's like all of this stuff ties to nutrient availability without that none of this other oh let me i'm gonna put a freaking half a gallon of honey in the feeding this time oh it's gonna freaking taste so good 
it's not that's not how this plant works it's not how life works it's so strange that a bunch of people that are lazy and fucking weird got into the weed industry and started passing around all these dumbass wives tales that are not they're not, they don't make they don't hold any value in the real world after like real testing after beta testing you start really testing your own gardens and testing your own strains and really your own work you'll find out bro you can it's genetic potential and then letting that play itself out so how do we keep genetic potential on the board we have to make sure phenotypic expression is taken care of like on our end we're not going to be having these crazy temperature spikes and swings oh well fuck it's purple or it's tiny the buds are so small well dude you had temperature swings so bad we don't know maybe it, it's not a tiny bud strain maybe it's a big bud strain you're a fucking asshole because you don't know how to grow weed so it's one of those things where like the simple concepts that i learned from thomas ray i've used for fucking the whole time i've been growing cannabis and they're just incredibly simple just things like that nutrient availability he taught me about letting mediums dry out about how essentially fungus and bacteria breathe oxygen too so for them to properly all of the things that you get from a from a relationship a beneficial symbiotic relationship that you'll have with fungi and your roots mycorrhizae and bacteria and sugar and all of this none of that works if it's if there's too much moisture none of it so all of it's pointless and all of the enzyme reaction and everything that you can start tying together this whole chain it just falls apart. It falls apart if you don't have nutrient availability. If you don't have, um, like, I don't want to say like a specific temperature, but you guys know what I'm talking about. When there's, dude, I've been in rooms before. Right when I walk in, I'm like, oh my god, it's so disgusting in here. If it's uncomfortable to you, it's uncomfortable to them. You can guarantee it. So that's why a lot of people are not growing good pot. They're completely disconnected from plants. They're not even. They don't. They don't they're not there and thomas ray taught me to be there taught me to lock in and i was in seventh grade and i'm telling you right now like i said i'm still using a bunch of the stuff the simple stuff it's not even crazy stuff but he definitely taught me to pay attention to a lot of the little things that i that have helped me fucking just leaps and bounds leaps and bounds thomas ray seventh grade eighth grade nice let's talk um uh strains uh genetics terps favorite strain to smoke what was like your, when you're starting out what was the, some of the first strains you remember growing and some of the your favorite strains of all time just as you know your smoking career i'll so call when it i started growing in oregon i took we had gotten a roommate and they had one hood so we bought another hood for flower and that gave us two um they had some strains already so essentially her boyfriend her husband left her and she was alone and she didn't grow weeds. So she said, hey, will you guys move into my house and your husband can grow the pot? She was friends with my wife. And so we took it up, we, we went with it. Um, he left a feeding schedule <laughs> on the wall and I'd never like grown pot really. So he left a feeding schedule on the wall and he left strains there. There was a strawberry cough cut. There was a um, Alaskan thunderfuck cut there was a a cut called the crippler that we that was over there that's an oregon cut that's absolutely fucking amazing i wish it's easy dude if i could have one cut that i don't have in my stable right now that's what i would get is the crippler i i only had it for one harvest and then i didn't know how to clone bro sure, I was you a didn't know novice. shit when you had the fire is genetic yeah and i got i fucking literally took clones from it and then put them in a dome and sealed the dome for 14 days <laughs> i'd never opened the dome i read that on a forum some dude was talking about that's how to clone and mind you these early tribulations these like these early fucking crazy trials that i went through learning all of this is a big reason why I decided to do the Patreon, why I decided to be the type of thing that I've done online where I help younger growers and I help any grower that needs help. If they come to me and they're asking, I try to do the write-ups and cover a lot of the bases before so that way they don't even need to ask because I didn't have nowhere to go, dude. It's so weird. If you go back 10 years ago and you look online, you'll see like all these crazy people that are all trying to be famous with weed 
<laughs> it's so weird, dude, how this all happened. And I remember having this conversation with someone. I said, dude, all these personalities on YouTube, none of these people will be known in like 10 years. Sure as shit. None of those people that were on YouTube, I, I am like one of the only ones, a uh, grower, the, the guy from Washington is another one. Um, but there was like this whole online community of growers. And I remember thinking these people are all crazy. Like just almost all of them were crazy. They were just crazy people, man. Like it was interaction after interaction of crazy people. It started to make me think that I was crazy. And then I realized I was like, no, this is what this is. Everyone wants to be the guy. I know I can help you. I can help you come to me. I'm going to make a page. I have all the tutorials. And anybody that was online 10 years ago knows exactly what I'm talking about. Every forum, every single forum was polluted with all these people talking about the tech, mm -hmm. but nobody had any pictures. Nobody had any proof. It was just talking three pounds of light. Oh, if you don't get three pounds of light, you don't, you're not even doing it right. Blah, blah, blah. Just like all this, like, blah. it's like, no, three pounds of light is subjective to genetics. First things first, <laughs> like some, some are some, there's literally cuts that it's fucking goddamn near impossible to get three pounds of life. Forum cookies is one of them. True. I think it happened to, to a little bit because uh, Overgrow got taken down, which was one of the original forum spots. And when Overgrow left, yeah. that that was like the resource for the real information. And when that left, it was like a million charlatans kind of came up or snake oil salesmen and be like, I got that data. I got that stuff. I copy pasted off Overgrow. You know what I mean? And it sort of spawned yeah. like this whole carpetbagger mentality that moved forward. And it feels good to help. I'm assuming it feels good to those people, even though they're fake, they, they're like faking it. Cause I know for me, like I know some things about cannabis fucking through and through. I've studied them. I've used them. I've tried them. I've beta tested it. I've like, that's what I'm saying. It's different, right? When you're hands on you're decades in you're you're like, it's a, it's a thing. So then <clears throat> like, I just, I just get completely like, I don't even know. I don't even know how to like express it other than just frustration. <laughs> and, I, and I know that I get happy when I'm helping someone and I know that they got real help. So I'm assuming if I was a crazy person, that was like fake helping that I would still have that trigger in my fucking human brain where I'd be like, oh, yeah. Oh, they're saying thank you to me. <laughs> it's better like, to give than receive. The old adage is true. You know what I mean? Yes, it does feel good yes. to give, you know. And if you've Absolutely. actually ever given in proper sense or done some shit that, you know, where you really stepped up and I don't know, whatever it may be in your, in your own circumstances where you were giving something, be it your time, something financial, whatever, it's like, it does feel good when you step back from that situation and be like, look, I, I helped out in that scenario. And it may even be a little Absolutely. information. So I agree with you there. Um, talk to me a little bit about your starting... Um, uh, prolific co-seeds or early work? I don't know your early breeding work. Did, did you work with anybody early on? Or is this just no. sort of your own joint the entire time? And what, so what, what was this with sort PCS of your, take me through the start of your company. What happened with PCS was basically like I had failed. I just kept failing. And it got to the point to where like I didn't know why I was failing. I was questioning myself. I've said this many times and I'll say it again. I didn't know why I was struggling. I couldn't get fucking $1,200 for the shit I was growing, dude, a pound. I was drowning. People were like, I'll give you 800 maybe. Like, so it was just rubbish on rubbish and it kept being rubbish. And I was growing seeds from, at the time, the biggest names in the cannabis industry. And before we're out of here, I'm going to make a fucking, I want to make a statement about what I was feeling. And I'll, I'll just do it right now. There was a handful of people that had horses on the track and they're running laps. And so they think they're the fastest and they're, oh man, look at my horse. Oh, I got a race horse. And it's because nobody else was on the track. <laughs> Fuck, if you put 10 donkeys on a track and they run around, people will bet on them eventually. So... <clears throat> what you had was people that had balls. Yeah, some of these early guys that started doing this shit before everybody because it was fucking sketchy back in the day. So I give them props there. But you tell me right now who's growing some of those dudes. The people that started all this, 
And the reason why nobody grows that shit is because it's fucking mids, bro. And the younger breeders that are here, be it all the people you could throw all the shade you want on anybody you want, doesn't matter. There is no watering down of strains. That's theoretically and logically impossible if you understand fucking cuts at all. I would have to have every single sour diesel cut to water down sour diesel. Whatever project I do in my garage, no matter how shitty it ever ends up being, does not affect the cut of sour diesel as long as that's somewhere and someone is protecting it, which trust me, you fucking weirdos, it's all protected. It's all somewhere. So fucking relax. The younger breeders have brought a level to cannabis that is fucking unseen. Unseen. 45 a pack, 52 a pack, 350 on the zip all the way up. Motherfuckers feasting, changing their whole existences for generational. Not even just, oh, I'm going to change my life for a year or two and have some stories. Ha <laughs> ha, remember when we used to eat good? Remember when we had dope cars? Oh, yeah, as they're clocking into the factory job. Remember when we made 50K that month? Ha <laughs> ha. Remember when we when we stacked a half mil that year? Oh, yeah, that was crazy. Clocking into the job at the fucking construction site. No. These people are building stuff that's going to last forever. And it's from new genetics and new stuff. It's not from fucking Panama Red, you assholes. Stop fucking, stop sitting around acting like these dudes gave us the fucking holy grails of cannabis. Look at the pictures of old care. It's fucking rags. The young breeders have, have brought something that is going to, I'm telling you, man, people don't understand this. And if you, if you don't want to understand it, you don't have to understand it, but I'm telling you, it doesn't make it not true. Sure. I would point to like, not true. I would point to the advent of, you know, just the HID light in like the late eighties and the fact that some of the strains you're talking about, they, they could do one breeding project a year. You know what I mean? Think of like they had one shot, one summer. We did one thing, and then next summer we'll do we'll do the F two next summer or some shit. Where when you introduce an HID light in the eighties and even more advanced lighting in the nineties in indoor grow rooms and bigger bigger spaces with cooling and guys turning turning strains that are longer flowering times to shorter flowering times, and then now some might say polluting them, but at the same time crossbreeding the fuck out of all of it, shortening shit, finding diamonds here or there. And uh, yeah, it's been an evolution of cannabis. But yeah, I would say right along with what you're saying is I think the, the information gap, because like you said, all we had was bro science. It was like, you know, I heard this, bro. If you do that, you're going to get a lot. And now, if you look at where we are today, there's data in huge grow facilities on everything from par readings to PPM levels to, uh, the, you know, I could send you a fucking SOP on how to grow dank when shit didn't fucking exist before. So it's fast track. Yeah. It's sort of like the tech industry where something doubles every year or not even every year. Like the processor speed is just doubling, tripling, doubling. And we're in that lightning phase where things are going wild. There is some shit veering off left and veering off right, but there's also like lightning speed work going on, which is pretty monumental. And we're in, if you look at the scale of, of the time of cannabis, we're still so much more to learn as far as isolating out different oh, compounds and shit. We're, and infantile. we're not we even that. truly we're helping the, you know, to medicinal cannabis. We take the entire plant because we don't know what part fixes what or you know, you know what I mean? We're just like, just take RSO, just bombard it with as much as we can figure out because we don't really know right now. It's all out of tech. It's like, well, what if we could isolate Delta 8 or you know, 7, 9 compounds and all of a sudden it's like, oh, well, you, this milligram for that, this, and then, you know, with a regimen, this shit is coming, folks. And, you know, we're going to be able to knock some of this stuff out. Dude, as soon as they can pre-screen people genetically and find out the precursors and the markers that we have in our bodies, that will be the true. And it, then we'll actually be able to find out, like, what is happening to people when they eat certain foods. And, like, we're, we're, like, so close. I really feel like we're incredibly close. I'd say probably 10, 20 years before our lifetimes, if we get lucky to be old men, then we'll get to see some like insane advances. I mean, I mean, obviously we can only hope. Who knows? <laughs> By the looks of it, we might be going backwards. Who knows? <laughs> I do say the way forward is backwards. Maybe. Yeah, you're right. So you can eat outside, <laughs> but as long as the outside doesn't look like inside, unless it's inside framed up like outside, but inside. Hold on, I'm confused, bro. I'm, <laughs> I can't even do. It. Let's bring it back to some of your genetics, though. I do want to talk and give you an opportunity to talk about some of your strains. Tell me about some of your best strains, what you're most notable for, 
um, with your best seller. Just talk, just talk a little bit about your like stuff. The first, the first stuff that we dropped, um, the meow, the cake bomb, yeah, the cake bomb, the case s'mores, they seem to be the like the stuff that, and I don't know if that's just the way that um, seed works. I kind of a new player here, so I'm not sure if. I'll know in the next two years. So there's either it's either one or the other. Either people really enjoy that that first stuff that much, or it takes a year or so of something being on the market and really saturating grow rooms for the word of mouth and pictures to kind of gain traction for that seed to grab hold. If it's not hype, totally. If it's not something that's super hypey. That shit sells out super fast, of course. Whether it ends up being good or not, I feel like there's a lot of stuff that's being made and sold by all types of people. Um, that's just not – it's not going to hold up. It won't be good. Well, so That's I mean, kind of like you mentioned some of the newer breeders that we've seen come and go, and that's part of that, that uh, I don't know, formula, is you come out with a absolutely. bunch of shit that sounds good. But then everyone buys it, grows it. It's either herm or dog shit, or they don't like it, and you can never sell another bean. So you just sort of fade away. You know what I mean? And we've seen yep. a lot and of that that's, happen. That's the best part about selling seed, man. And I don't care. I I have literally fell in love with that. That it's like capitalism to the fucking core. <laughs> you made something. If it's good, people will like it and they'll buy it. And if it's not, they won't, and you will fuck off. <laughs> and it's just perfect because I can't force someone to grow my seed in their garden and I can't go feed the seed in your garden or grow it for you. So when I'm getting all this great feedback all the time on these these crosses, I know I know that I did it right and it just does feel good and it's special. And I know that that's going to be like like, dude, the first the first stuff that we did, Proxima, Gas Valley meow like we're talking about being able to bring real gas real profiles of mercine fucking gas real gas not so that's that's where i started pcs was because i had already grown this kush and this og and this and all these people putting kush and og on packs of seeds that have no og there's no gas here this is not gas this is a plant it smells like plant it tastes like plant and I can't sell fucking plant packs, <laughs> motherfucker. It smells like fucking plant. I remember, dude, there was one very, this guy is totally off the face of the earth now, but he was really well known. About seven years ago, shot me maybe $1,500 in seed for free. And then I bought another 500 in seed and I did all of it in one shot. And it was fucking AIDS. It was fucking AIDS, dude. It was the worst. And I just thought in my head, I was like, does he not understand that I have kids? Like, that I'm trying to feed my family? Like, and it was just one of these things that kind of just set it, set the tone. And I realized there's no way I can't do this better than what I just did right now. There's no fucking way. No way. I don't give a fuck. I know I don't know a lot about it. I know I'm completely, even now I'm learning all the time and I'm reading new stuff and it is what it is. I'm gaining traction and learning about the depth of it. Um, it's one of those things that I think is so deep that I don't know if you'll ever get to the end per se, unless you're a super fucking nerd, but that's not me. I'm like a fucking, I'm a street kid, dude. So I'm always like, you know, I don't know. I'm just always sucking in new info. I'm always sucking in stuff. Not this. God damn it. You guys are fucking dead, man. Anyways, but yeah, I'm always trying to suck up information and make sure that I'm getting better. And I feel like giving Mersine gassy, real profiles to people in Kentucky and people in fucking Venezuela or somebody who lives in fucking Munich, fucking somebody who lives in Germany. These people don't know what gas is, bro. I had a guy hit me up from fucking uh, the Philippines the other day. And he sent me a picture of gas, bro. It was gas. I could see it. We all know what gas looks like. I saw it in the picture. I say, you, if he, if he doesn't fucking hang it up outside next to a fucking river swamp with the rugs, it will taste fire as long as he doesn't fuck up the last part. And I was thinking in my head, I'm like, PCS, Philippines, gas. Like, that's real. Totally. It's not a joke. It's not a, it's not a dream. Somebody can have real gas 
anywhere. Go well, to so Idaho. Bro. You have worldwide distribution, so you essentially it's a weird feeling. I, I know the feeling that you're kind of talking about. Well, all of a sudden, the DMs start coming from all across the globe or Russia or like yeah, Australia yeah. or just like say Thailand. Or you're like, whoa, like this Super is kind of sort of weirds you out, but at the same time, it's like. Wait a minute, man. Like it makes you feel like you have I don't want to say more power, but it's like you can actually touch the earth. Like the earth becomes smaller. The responsibility becomes incredibly different too for some reason. I don't know why I didn't think about it, but when I launched PCS, I didn't think about people in other fucking places of the world growing it. And I as soon as I realized that it was like that, that there was people in Australia and people in South America that were buying the seed and growing it, I I felt even more of a responsibility to deliver good seed. The reason why PCS was started was from failure. It was from disrespect. And I just knew I would never do that to farmers. And I've yet, like I said, the only mutants are our haters. I've literally never seen anything like this. Everything is fire. If it gets dropped to market, it's fire. <laughs> so it's the studs period because all these cuts the king louis cut the scots face on fire wi-fi three zookies fucking the uh, dosi forum like these are all cuts that are out there people have these cuts so why isn't everybody just making badass offspring with these cuts and then i realized dude the same reason i was getting shitty seed bro it's the fucking it's the it's a whole makeup. It's not just these badass females. And even if you put a badass female with a badass male, it does not mean that your fucking offspring is going to be good. If it was only that easy. Oh, my God. Right. Or if it, you know, I say if it's really what it is, you know, a lot of times as a newbie, you don't really know what you're buying. You're, you're thinking you're buying the right one. And you're buying the fakest version of some shit from, you know, it's yep. a picture that was stolen like off a fake version of that. And it's like, and you think is, you're there. That is a huge advantage with PCS. And I feel like people as growers and buyers, young growers should understand this. When you're buying seeds from a breeder, you're not only buying his work and you're trusting his actual work, but you're trusting his palate. You're trusting his flavor choices. Mm -hmm. um a great example of this is sub cool rest in peace you old fucking you old crazy motherfucker he um he had a very like specific palette for his selection and it was very recognizable like when you would smell tga weed oftentimes you'd be like oh that's that's fucking tga weed especially here in the pacific northwest because this was kind of his house for a long time and um it's just kind of like a testament to him specifically and his crew, the stuff that they were selecting and the stuff they were using as their breeding partners. And it, they had a very specific look to them. They tend to have a ton of resin, not a lot of um, head size, though. That was something I noticed early with a lot of his stuff was that it was stocky, but covered in resin, tons of flavor. If you like that type of flavor mm -hmm. and then, you know, like, it's just like I said, somebody like me personally, I don't like that, those flavor profiles, but there's people that love those flavor profiles. So if you're a young grower and a young smoker or whatever, understand that when you're fucking with a breeder or you're buying seeds for somebody or whatever, you're buying into their palate. You have to understand, like they selected all their breeding partners and they should have selected through their breeding partners for their studs too and everything. It's like a long thing of selection and taste should be in my opinion obviously i'm just a fucking fly on the wall dude but i think if weed doesn't taste good we shouldn't even be there yep. i don't really give a fuck it would have to be the absolute most amazing pot for me to be super interested in it and it not have flavor i feel like that's the first thing <laughs> flavor and smoke I and mean, then obviously we want to get high from it we want it to have a good effect on our body but if it doesn't smell good and taste good, like, I don't fucking, what is this shit? Get the shit out of my face. <laughs> I'm with you. It's flavor all day. Flavor on everything. Flavor over everything all day. Um, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I guess I'm going to kind of sort of wrap it up, but I'm going to ask you what's next. Where do you plan to be in five years? And I'll make it kind of a two-parter. Like, have you messed with licensing or any of that bullshit out there? Are you trying to get into any of this metric nonsense and... You know, like run a shop or do any of that stuff? Or are you just content to make some seeds and chill? So I'm the head of 
cultivation for a company out here and I just, you know, make sure that their weed is grown and I just mind my P's and Q's, man. With PCS, where I see it going is just us continuing to deliver something that people can trust, you know, when they buy it, they know that the seeds are going to be poppable and they're going to not fucking be mutant trash. Like (laughs) there's just a lot of, I've said this to people. I know we're going to wrap it up. This is probably the best advice I could give anybody listening. If you're just getting into the marijuana industry or you're a young person and you're trying to learn how to do this here, just don't be a piece of shit. And you're already ahead of like 80% of people here. (laughs) <laughs> so I'm I'm dead serious. You'll figure this out one way or the other. So that's what I'm doing with PCS. We're just going to stay true to what we do. We make fire crosses and we make stuff that people enjoy. And in America, I feel like something like that lasts forever. So I feel pretty good at PCS and where we're off to. We're just going to stay doing what we've been doing and stay in, stay in the, in the waves, man. The water's warm, baby. Yes, sir. I give everybody like, um, uh... Obviously, a lot of you are watching on Instagram, but for the replay, uh, the Instagram is on top of your screen, Coma the Grower. Uh, give them a follow, and uh, where can people get your seeds, bro? I know you're kind of everywhere, uh, but do you have any coast, sites you want to send people to? Prolificcoseed.com is where you can go buy all the creations that are in stock. We also have, um, I have a subscription service for PCS seeds, and it's kind of more than a prescription ser- a subscription service. It's it's a group of people, man. It's the Patreon. Yeah, I've heard Coma about it. Explain grower. it to me. I want to know what's going on with this. So basically, I have three tiers of subs, a $25 a month, a $50 a month, and a $100 a month. The $25 gets a half a pack of seeds. The 50 gets one pack of seeds, and the 100 gets two packs of seeds. They all come with sticker packs. They all come with, like... Um, hat pins, lighters, merch, whatever, like just random stuff. And um, I have write-ups on this Patreon basically giving younger growers and even older growers a lot of huge keys and concepts that I feel like are left out of the, the conversations, whether they're left out on purpose or not. But these are things like harvesting and curing techniques, cloning concepts, like... Um, anything it could be any i've literally written about pm prevention uh you name it it's per, it's been written about over there or it's in the middle of getting written about we're we're crushing write ups over there so we meet on the 1st and the 14th of every month in the discord chat and we talk there's like a round table of growers really nice. good growers all of the patrons have access to that so they can come two days a month and bring their questions bring any concerns they have um, we also help each other, you know, if you're in Arizona and maybe you need a rack of clones, maybe we might be able to fucking pass the word to the, you know, it, it is what it is. We're definitely just taking care of each other over there. The three tiers are all seed subscriptions. So even if you didn't learn anything from the write-ups, you still get your merch every month. And that's kind of what it is, man. It's just a, just a spot for stoners to come and growers to come and learn and learn from somebody like, I'm not going to fucking toot my own horn, but dude, in reality, there's so many fucking people out here that don't grow good pot and it is what it is. I grow good pot. There's good people that grow good pot. There's a bunch of them. There's a bunch of them. Now, if they made patrons, Patreons and taught you how to grow pot, or if they're giving you tips in the DM, fucking all for it. A lot of really good growers don't have time and they don't give a fuck about other growers. They don't. So I think that building that Patreon and me designing it to, to do what it does is like, nobody's done it. It's definitely special. I think everybody who's on there loves it. We have a really great group of guys and girls over there. So if it's something that you might be interested in, drop in, you can definitely subscribe and check it out. And if you don't like it, you can unsubscribe and it doesn't cost you a dime. So don't cool, be afraid. Yeah. Everybody go check it out. Need a little help or you just want to join the community, check out uh, Coma's, uh Discord or Patreon is what it's called. Uh, get on his Patreon. Yes, sir. And, yes, sir. Uh, check it out. So uh, yeah, that's kind of that's kind of a wrap, dude. Anything you want to say on the way out the door? Final word dude, to I you, my man. It. it was good. It was good talking to you. I know we don't we don't ever get to really sit down and talk. Everybody's always busy and shit, but definitely uh, good talking with you, man. And it's been a pleasure pleasure working with you guys. I know we've done a little bit of side business and stuff, so absolutely uh, just been a pleasure. So thank you for the time and yes, thank sir. everybody thank for you, watching man. and. Fuck yeah, dude. Thanks for doing it, bro. Appreciate it. 
Be well, brother. Peace. Ciao. That was Coma. I thank him for coming on and doing that and giving us his time. Uh, yeah, we had to move it back because he had to get the kids from, I think, jujitsu. So, yeah, I appreciate him for making himself available for us tonight. And that's a wrap. So, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to have to piece this one together because we had technical difficulties in the middle. But I think I'm going to have to go ahead and sign this fucker off. Um, yeah, same time next week, same time... Uh, Shit, it might not be. Is it Christmas? No? Okay. Yeah, we'll do one more. We're probably not going to do one the week of Christmas Eve, but we'll do one more next week. So, yeah. Might be like the season finale next week. Might need to take a little time off. It's been one official full year. But, uh, yeah. Thanks, everybody. Dark Horse Live. Signing the fuck off. See you next week. Peace.